Hi guys and welcome to Radwolf and Bushcraft. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Today's video is going to be about making your own medicinal ointments. And if you haven't seen my latest video on Plantago, a medicinal plant, please make sure you check out the link right up here in the information box. As I promised in this video, I wanted to share a very basic recipe with you that you can use with basically every type of plant you can find out there in nature to make your own medicine. And if this is of interest to you, just join me today. I'm going to prepare a couple of things right now and I'm just going to teach you how to make your own medicine. Okay, off we go. So before we get started, let's quickly have a look at the ingredients and the equipment that we need to make our own ointment. First and foremost, we need some basic substance to get that cream or ointment going. And I use olive oil for that. You can also use a different type of oil like linseed oil or maybe even sunflower oil. Doesn't really make that much of a difference. It's all up to your preference and your budget. Then of course you need something to thicken your cream or your ointment. In this particular case, I use beeswax. I always get this from a friend of mine who is a beekeeper. Um, if you don't know any beekeepers, well, just look at stores that sell biological vegetables and such, or do sell kind of homeopathic medicines. Usually you can also find beeswax there. It's a rather common product. And otherwise, just look for beekeepers in your area and just ask them, because this is kind of like a garbage product. Some beekeepers are making candles out of that. Others are just storing that for wood treatments and for, yeah, basically taking care of cutting boards like these and whatever. But you will definitely find some, so just have a look around for that. It's relatively cheap. Um, if you can't find this, maybe also consider coconut wax if you want to use this. Again, it doesn't make all too much of a difference for as long as it doesn't contain chemicals and it's basically waxy in texture, so you can thicken the oil later on. Next to that, we of course need some sort of herb or medicinal plant. In my case, this is again the plantago because we are going to make an anti-burn and an anti-wound type of ointment. Of course, we need a cutting board so we can process the actual plant parts right here. Then we need a container, just a little jar. This was from, I think, pasta sauce or so. You can always keep them and reuse them. I'm just using this, you know, to make smaller portions of ointments because as you can see, even if you fill this, this is going to last you for at least a year to come. And yeah, we also need a pot with which we're going to boil water so we can actually melt all these ingredients and make a homogeneous substance out of that. So basically like, yeah, some sort of soup, <laughs> if I may call it so. And also for stirring that, I'm always using a tiny wooden stick like that. I'm not using cutlery because cleaning up the wax is going to be a mess. So just go for those big toothpicks, so to speak, or just carve yourself something and just get it going. The interesting thing about all these ingredients, you could also use this in the outdoors. So even if you're in the forest and you just have some sort of container, and let's say, for example, you have this for cooking your lunch, you can use this for the water bath and for heating, yeah, basically your ointment. And you can also just find trash out there. You might find a glass like this and you can st like start producing yeah, your ointments out in nature if you're lucky and you get all the ingredients. Um, one more thing, I also do have the scale right here. This scale measures up to 0.1 grams. The reason simply being that I'm not making a lot of ointment right here. Like I just need a couple of grams of this wax to actually get the ointment going. But I will get to this in a second. I would say let's just build it up, have a look at how this looks like. And I'm also going to talk you through the recipe and the process of making the ointment, all right? Okay, so the first thing to do, obviously, is to switch on your cooking plate and just put on your pot. As you can see, I put in a bit of water right here. This simply is for the water bath, because as you can see, we will put this jar in here, just as if we would make some marmalade or so, and basically heat our ointment without boiling it itself. It's just a water bath to make it liquid, to make it homogeneous, right? That's the first step. Pretty simple. So first of all, we are going to put a bit of oil into our jar. This jar has about 150 milliliters. So I'm just going up about two thirds, just like so. That should be about 100 milliliters. It's important to be relatively precise here because the ratio would always be 30 milliliters of oil to one gram of beeswax. 
In this particular case, as I have about 100 milliliters in there, I can use about 3 grams of wax. That already is a great starter. I can always add more wax if I want to make the ointment a little thicker, but I would recommend to just start off with a smaller amount, just to let it harden, and in case of your ointment being too yeah, liquid and being um, too soft in texture, just adding a little more wax later on. You can always make it thicker, but you can never really thin it down unless you add more oil. And yeah, if a container like this is full, you will have trouble in adding more. So that's basically the first step. Next, we're going to have a look at the wax and just cut it down into pieces. Therefore, we need our scale. Now we are taking off bits and pieces of the wax, just like so and see that we can get about 3 grams worth of beeswax. That's already 1.9. Just get like a second piece like this. That's 3.1 gram. Just perfect. This will be enough to thicken our ointment. Now just simply take the wax and put it into the oil. Just like so. And now this can go to the water bath so we can get the basic ointment substance which we will use for the plant parts later on. As you can see the water is already steaming so now we just put in that glass and we turn down the heat of our cooking plate right here to make sure that the water doesn't start to boil. This is really important because we just want the wax to melt inside that glass and we don't want to boil it up later on when we add our medicinal herbs because boiling the medicinal herbs also results in a loss of active ingredients it's better to work with lower temperatures again the wax is also going to melt at around 40 degrees celsius which is just perfectly fine so just switch off the cooking plate right here make sure you're gonna save a little bit of energy and just let um, the heat that's within the pot melt down all of that material here all of that wax and the oil it's really important also to once in a while just go in there and start stirring and this will take a while you might want to wait about 20 minutes up until everything is dissolved if you're cutting down the wax into smaller pieces of course this will be faster but if you got the time just let that work in and make sure you keep on stirring up until you have kind of like a homogeneous type of substance here a liquid that's basically gooey and homogeneous and even as far as we're just making a little amount of ointment we can just take a handful of these plantago leaves in this case again if you have another plant you can just use any other type of plant you can use shepherd's purse for example penny cress you can use achillea you can use um, wild garlic even you know if you just want to get some kind of etherical oils in there anything is possible here you can just you know be creative with this and just learn about plants and then just use the same recipe for any other plant in order to make yourself your own personal ointment that you need for whatever kind of boo-boo or whatever kind of sickness or ever any kind of illness so to speak so yeah what we're going to do then is just cutting down all those plant parts as you can see I'm not paying a lot of attention to making the bits and pieces even this is just for the sake of having these openings right here let me just get that close because right here where we have that cut the leaf saps will just be pulled out by our ointment, by our basic um, liquid that we have in our jar boiling right now. And this is really important because the more surface you have, the more active ingredients you can extract from these plants. So just cut those down and make sure you get about like a good handful, just like so. If you want a little stronger ointment, you can just put in more, but this usually does the trick. Now we just leave this here and wait for our basic ointment substance to be homogeneously dissolved. In the meantime, let's have a look at our wax right here. As you can see, we still need to stir this quite a bit because the wax is always melting on the outside of those wax blocks, right? And then it's combining with the oil. So just be a little patient here. Just keep on stirring that. At a point, it will just dissolve and just create this homogeneous mass that we were talking about. In the meantime, I also would like to show you this pot right here. This is also an ointment that I made from Shepherd's Purse and from Creeping Charlie. 
And this is particularly interesting because it's used for treating sunburns. And as you can see, this looks rather liquid, right? Let me just stir this because also the wax is going to drop down right here in the glass. It's going to be kind of like a sediment. So once in a while you would have to stir this before using it. But just to show you the consistency, if you can see the drip right here, this is a relatively soft and relatively liquid ointment. The reason for this simply being that for treating sunburns I want something that is almost liquid so I can just apply this to the skin just like so, see? So that it's getting sucked in by the skin very well. This is actually a ratio of about one gram on 100 milliliters. So one third of the thickness of what this is about to get. And you can just experiment with these kind of things, you know, you need to get a feeling for that because you can always make them liquid like so. If I want to thicken that, I'm just going to take another block of beeswax and I'm just going to put it right in here, just heat that up again, stir it again and just make it thicker. So you can do anything you want right here. It's pretty simple. So after about 10 minutes, we can have a look at the result right here. As you can see, this is already getting kind of like blurry or kind of um, milky, so to speak, if you see this. And now we basically just add all those plant parts into the glass, just like so. And you can just, you know, stuff that in up until the point that the entire glass is filled. Just make sure that all plant particles are put into the oil itself, you know, don't let them stick out like so. But just make sure that you're going to put them down just like so and you would get this result. This can now stand here for, let's say, half an hour. If it should solidify quicker because you're living in a colder climate, um, just make sure you're going to put this back into the water bath. If you do so, you can basically then keep that liquid very liquid without just densifying and just without getting thicker and just let the active ingredients of the plant soak into the oil. This should take about like one hour, two hours. The longer you leave it the better of course. I usually go for the two hours. I will do this right now, just leave this right here. Maybe put it back into the water bath if it should solidify too quickly. And yeah, once in a while I'm also coming here just to stir that. That's really important because usually the bottom part and the top part of your glass will start cooling down quicker than the center. So you would get kind of solidified wax right here. Just make sure you keep on stirring this so you always keep this homogeneous type of liquid because later on we also want to basically take this glass, use a second glass and then um, put the oil through a sieve so we can get the plant particles out. We don't want them in our medicine. But I will get to this in about one to two hours, all right? See you then. So about one and a half hours later, we can already see that this is kind of solidifying. It's kind of coagulating, right? See, in the middle right here, it can still be stirred, but on the outside it's already pretty thick. Let me just show you right here. This is the consistency we will get in the end. So I'm just going to heat that up one more time. While heating it, we just keep on stirring yet again. Because as you can see on the bottom, it's already dissolving again. It's melting down into that very liquid and oily texture. And once it's liquid, we just pour it through a sieve into another glass, get out the plant particles and we're almost done. And now for the final step, just make sure that this is still warm, almost hot, so that it still stays liquid. And then as said before, just pour it right into that tea sieve. Just like so. And just let your ointment sink through and just collect in that glass. And here we got our final result. Just to show you, this is the consistency. If I just apply this to the skin, it's just like a cream as you can buy it in the drugstore. Really nice ointment. So to wrap up the video, a couple of final thoughts. I would recommend putting on the date of production on the top of the lid as well as the plant that is contained within your ointment, simply because those ointments might turn at a point, they might spoil. And 
You could also smell that with certain plants, but not with all plants, right? And also if you work with a lot of plants, they always have different aromas, so um, you kind of like tricking your nose into thinking that they're still good and maybe you might have a rotten one in between. And if you mark this with the production date, you can be sure that you can use this for about two to three months to come. And maybe even five to six months, but that depends on the plant. This is all about practical experience, which also brings me to the second point. Just get busy doing that, just experiment around a little bit, and when in doubt, you know, just throw away the ointment and just make a new one. Because, again, you can find all the resources out in nature, you can find a lot of medicinal herbs there, and a batch like that, you know, if it turns bad, you know, you just replace it. And when it comes to making these things, also be curious, you know, start experimenting. Maybe use a different type of wax, maybe try coconut oil and just see whether it creates the same consistency of the ointment. Practice is the best teacher in that case, so if you just get busy, you will get a nice result. So please really make sure that you apply this in your everyday life, just do it rather than just watching the video, so you will learn something about it. And then of course, let me know what your experience was like. If you have any kind of trouble, just leave a comment below, I will reply to that. Um, if you got any other kind of recipe you want to share with the world, just leave a comment too. Um, if you like this and you have any kind of remark, also leave a comment of course. And yeah, if the video was to your satisfaction, please give it a thumbs up. Please make sure you share it with your loved ones. And if you want to, please leave a subscription to the channel. And I'll just wrap it up from here. So thanks a lot for watching. Have a great time outdoors and also in your kitchen. And see you next time. Bye bye. Ciao.